So the work here in this uh, optimization of the salt swarm algorithm is uh, I would like to address uh, a couple of key things uh, before starting. And that is that uh, this algorithm is metaheuristic, which means that uh, it takes inspiration from another heuristic, in this case, from a natural one, from the nature. And that is the animal named salt. But later on, I will give more word on the which type of animal is this and what type of behavior was translated into a algorithm. Uh, it is also in the field of swarm intelligence, uh, which uh, means that uh, this animal moves in a, in a, in a large group and uh, performs tasks together that uh, a single unit of the species would not be able to do so. And uh, through cooperation, they achieve a larger goal. Uh, the form intelligence also is, it is important for these type of artificial intelligence algorithms to mention that they uh, employ two phases, exploration and exploitation. In the first one, the search for the optima is focused on the local field, the in the in the field of search locally in the field of search, and uh, in the latter one, the exploitation it is uh, more based on the global field, and uh, the goal is to find the optimal population. In this, the the population meaning the whole. Uh, number of uh, units from that from that species and uh, it, it has all obviously been proven that it is uh, very very good for solving MP card problems uh, which are uh, problems that cannot be solved in a deterministically polynomial time and these problems are very hard and very hard to optimize and this is what makes them so powerful uh, also what, what was focused on is the global optimization and um, the goal of global optimization is to find the global minima or maxima and uh, did this is uh, important to uh, highlight as uh, a lot of these optimization algorithms uh, find the very good uh, local solutions, which are lo local minima or maxima, and they get stuck in it. The algorithm that this this form intelligence algorithm that was optimized with uh, op opposition based learning principle and uh, all, all of these uh, method heuristic algorithms uh, they, they provide very good solutions but uh, they are usually not perfect in their in their first in the first solution that that, that was made out of them and uh, very good results and can be achieved through hybridization with another algorithm or another principle. In, in this case, that is opposition-based learning. And uh, opposition-based learning, just a couple of words on it, is uh, a method where we do not just search for the uh, best solution. We also search for the worst one. And, uh, in this in this process, we increase our chances of, fi of finding the best solution because if we know what is bad, we will, <laughs> we will know also what is good. Uh, simply put. Okay, so a, a little bit more elaborate on the form intelligence field. 
some of the, these things I have already mentioned. And just uh, five, five key points here that should be mentioned. Uh, I will try not to repeat myself as best as I can. And um, okay, the, 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 the interesting part. Uh, salt is actually, I don't know if you've heard for this animal, honestly, for in my case, it, I, I will probably would have never heard of it if it weren't for the, the, this, this algorithm. And apparently it is a, a aquatic, an aquatic creature that is small, barrel shaped and uh, mostly transparent. And it can remind you of like uh, jellyfish, but similar, but not, not, not quite, quite, quite alike. And uh, they're in their life cycle. They they do not they are not born in in these chains, but they rather group up and uh, one behind another and for, form these chains that are on the beginning of which are the leaders. And the purpose of this type of behavior is to find food, obviously, that is translated into the algorithm as the current best solution and uh, pathfinding. This algorithm is also naturalistic. Um, and the, the, the principle that was employed here is to the opposition-based learning is to search for the opposite of the best solution. And that this was uh, placed in the initialization. Initial okay, sorry, I cannot pronounce the word. Uh, in the phase of initialization. And uh, we, we will be able to see that later on in the pseudo code. And this obviously increases chances of finding, finding the global optimum. And these are the, the, the formulas of the original solve SOLARM algorithm. So not, not our solution. And just, I would like to touch on a couple of these parameters just to, uh, for you to be able to better understand what is going on. Uh, the X here represents the position in both cases. And on the left, it is the position of the leader and on the right of the followers. And followers update their position based on the, on the leader and the, the following formula. We have, besides the position, we have the uh, three par parameters here, C1, C2, C3, and all of which are uh, randomly generated numbers. And the uh, most important one is C1 because it controls the balance between exploration and exploitation. And this is the key tuning parameter for the, the equation. Okay, moving on. Uh, in this work, uh, we achieved the faster convergence speeds. The, the opposition-based learning during the phase, which is very hard to pronounce. <laughs> And uh, during the, the iterations of the, because uh, the, the, these algorithms for intelligent one uh, depend on the number of iterations, let's say. And because if uh, more iterations are performed, obviously the better results will be. Besides this, so with the position based learning, a wider spectrum was covered of the search domain and which can be said to provide better precision and better suboptimal avoidance in, in this case. Uh, these are the formulas for generating like the, the same from before for the population and uh, we are calculating the opposite dimension. And what I haven't mentioned, which I, I hope that uh, the listeners right now are familiar with, are the 
up, uh, u and l present upper upper limits and low, lower limits. And th this is the pseudo code, pseudo code. And uh, we can see here that, th that this is the phase I was talking about, where the opposite population x less on O uh, is generated. Uh, okay, and the, the, the results of the of the, this optimization, uh, as you can see, uh, the, the, our hybridized solution was better in 90% of the key performance indicators. And uh, it was uh, better uh, in eight out of 13 benchmark, well-known benchmark functions that I will show. And th th this proves that the improvement was made, but uh, these are the benchmark functions. I will just speed up a little bit right now because uh, I, I want to say a couple more important things about the results. And uh, here are the results over 20 dimensions and 50. And uh, as you can see, these are the benchmark functions I was talking about. And these are the uh, already proven well optimizers, well, well optimizing functions. And some of them you may have heard about already. Uh, the genetic algorithm, maybe, uh, the artificial B colony and colony. And as you can see, the, 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 these are the results that uh, our algorithm was better in. Okay, so are there any questions? Maybe I can start with a question. I would like to ask, as this approach looks very promising, what other practical domains do you have in mind for the future applications of the proposed algorithm? Well, so what I also wanted to mention during the presentation that a, a little speed it, speed it up at, at the end uh, is that um, these uh, results on the benchmark functions and in comparison to the older algorithms um, are a good foundation that uh, to, to make this a better algorithm and to make it uh, usable, but uh, they are not the proof of the that, that this algorithm will be actually better in practice. So for one, it would be to to, to employ the, the this solution to a practical one. And uh, I guess, guess that, <laughs> that that is a lot just on its own. 